This is one of my favorite soups to eat. It is rich and flavorful. The cheese is gooey and melts right into the soup. Oh, it's delicious. You'll love it. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. You know, French onion soup is actually really inexpensive to make, but when you order it out in a restaurant, it's like, what, 10 bucks a bowl? Although I love French onion soup and will often order it in the restaurant if I see it on the menu. We're just gonna start off by heating up the Instant Pot on saute mode. And while that's heating up, we will chop up our onions. I have about two and a half pounds of just yellow onions. You can use sweet onions. That will be really delicious. It's about four large onions and that hopefully will help you in the stores. I'm cutting it from top to bottom into, I guess, strips. That way the onion will hold its shape better than if you were to cut them into like a half moon shape. Dude, are your eyes watering? Well, that's why I'm like standing like a bazillion feet away. <laughs> I don't mind chopping onions. I wear contacts, so it doesn't really bother me, but I know a lot of people. I, I do smell it and it is irritating my nose a little bit. Okay, the pot should be hot by now, yes? So I am adding a quarter cup of butter, unsalted butter, two tablespoons of olive oil, Just gonna move this around to melt the butter and then I'm gonna add my onions. To caramelize the onions quicker, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of baking soda and that will just speed up the process. We're gonna cook this for about four minutes just to release some of the juices before putting the pressure on. I don't know if you can tell, but it really is very easy to make French onion soup. It's just a little bit time consuming because you want the onions to be caramelized. But I know in a restaurant, when it comes out on the table and the bowl is hot and the cheese is oozing over the bowl and it just looks amazing, but really it's simple to make and it's inexpensive to make at home. Okay, so it's been about four to five minutes. I'm not adding any liquid to the onions. The amount of liquid that's being produced by the onions will create enough pressure to get the pressure cooker going. Okay, I'm locking the lid into place, putting the seal knob on sealing, canceling the saute mode, and we're gonna manually cook this on high pressure for 15 minutes. Seriously, no other steps? That's it. If you're caramelizing onions on the stovetop, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Mind you, if you're using baking soda, it won't take as much time, but the traditional way of caramelizing onions takes forever on the stovetop. What I love about using the pressure cooker to caramelize the onions is that I'm not standing at the stove, constantly stirring and watching the onions cook down. And the other part actually is the smell. You could be creating a really strong onion odor in your home when you're cooking on the stovetop, but with the pressure cooker, a lot of the smell gets contained in the pot during that process. All right, I quick released the pressure once the cooking was done. And let's see what we have. It's a lot of liquid still in here. So what I'm gonna do is drain the onion liquid right into my beef broth, because I'm gonna add it all back in eventually anyways, but I want to cook the onions down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm just gonna press a little bit to get most of the onion juices out before I put it back into the pot. Then that will just save you some more time as you cook the onions down a little bit because you want the rest of the liquid to go. So we're gonna cook it for about another five minutes or so. Turning the saute mode back on. Returning the onions. It's starting to heat up. So we just want the remaining liquid to evaporate and caramelize the onions a little bit more. This will take about five to 10 minutes actually, not just five but you'll know 
when it gets to the right consistency. You do want the pot to do its thing to brown the bottoms of the onion, but you do want to stir it occasionally just to make sure that it's not sticking at the bottom. Now that fall is here, I really do love making soup and using the Instant Pot makes it so much easier to do. Soup just warms my belly. It's been about seven or eight minutes and you can start to hear that it's now sizzling at the bottom, which means most of the liquid is now gone. It'll just be another minute or so. You see how the color has changed a little bit so that it's more of a caramel color? Okay, at this point, I'm going to add half a cup of red wine. And then we're gonna scrape the bottom part, get all the brown bits up. I'm just gonna cook down the wine a little bit. Maybe about a minute or so. And we're gonna add six cups of broth plus the onion juices from before right into the pot. It's six cups of beef broth. I know you're tempted to rush it and just dump it in there, but... I know. There is a spout there for a reason. <laughs> Does mm. it smell? It smells good, right? It's very aromatic. I'm adding two sprigs of fresh thyme. And if you don't have fresh thyme, you can use half a teaspoon of dried. Are these from the garden? They are! About one and a half teaspoons of uh, kosher salt. And some freshly ground pepper, about half a teaspoon. I still have the saute mode going and that's fine because we want to put this back under pressure for about five minutes just to get the flavors all infused. Let's give this a stir. Okay. Putting the lid back on, locking it into place, making sure that sealing knob is on sealing. Cancel that saute mode and we're going to manual high pressure for five minutes. Also, I just wanted to say that if you're just making caramelized onions, you would have just stopped before putting the red wine in. You can use it for um, onion jam or use it in other recipes where they call for caramelized onions. You know what it would have been good on? The burgers we had last night. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, I grated a cup of Gruyere cheese and a cup of mozzarella. And I'm just gonna mix it together. And then we're gonna sprinkle it onto our bread and this is just a country loaf and I cut them about an inch thick and you just want to equally top each slice of bread and I am cheating here because I don't have those bowls that go straight into the oven because you all know I can't be bothered with that and speaking of can't be bothered Check out my new apron. Yes. So this was inspired by Tina Smith, who left a comment saying that she would love to buy a t-shirt with can't be bothered on it. We had our talented designer friend come up with a um, mock-up for us, and this is what we chose. An imperfect circle because I can't be bothered. If interested, we have links to the aprons and t-shirts in the description below. Okay, I'm gonna put these under the broiler for about three to five minutes, depending on how long it takes to uh, melt the cheese and brown it a bit. And I'll be right back. Right, I quick release the pressure. The soup smells amazing. So we're going to ladle some soup into a bowl. Just a little bit more. And we're just gonna top with the bread because I don't have those bowls, right? But it's right. okay. Mm -hmm. Look at how gooey that is. Wah! Yum. And a little bit of fresh parsley on top. And that's it. I know you all are waiting for. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Woo! And we didn't have to go to a restaurant to get this. The aroma is uh, so rich. I like to have the bread off to the side usually so it doesn't get uh, waterlogged with the soup. That's just me. The cheese is still gooey. Mmm. Oh yeah, this smells amazing. And I'm taking one for the team. I didn't have a chance to take the lactase pill yet, so this better be good. It will be good regardless. Oh, hot. Mmm. <laughs> It to be hot. The bread is still keeping its form. I don't know whether it's because of the country bread or not versus a regular French baguette. However, I think it's the cheese that's keeping it all together. Mmm, mmm, no. Oh, the balance of the cheese and the bread, so good. I'm gonna put this bowl down because it's gonna burn my finger. <laughs> oh, dude. dude! Ow! <laughs> oh! I can't believe you. The things I do for you guys on the taste. You guys can see that. The soup has the onion and its form still there. It hasn't been completely obliterated into the soup. And that's what Flo was talking about earlier and how she chopped it up. When I bite into the onion, I can still get some of that texture. Mm. Tasty. We're ready for fall. Yes. I'm so looking forward to digging into this soup, but this recipe is available in my cookbook, elevated so check that out in the meantime for more instant pot recipes i will see you over there